Hi, welcome to day 38 of the 40 days of prayer. And man, Jonathan, honestly, the fact that now I think about it, 38 out of 40, like we're almost there. <laughs> yeah, right. It's and, been a blessing. Amen. Amen. And so uh, what's our topic for day 38, man? The helmet of salvation. Oh, OK. And I know you were here talking previously on a, on a different day also on, on uh, the shield of faith. That's right. And then, so now we're actually going to be doing helmet of salvation. I'm super excited. <laughs> <laughs> amen, amen. And so uh, you want me to pray? You want to pray? Because um, I know, I mean, whoever does one, the other person's going to do the other one. So it's totally up to you. I'll start. Okay. All right. <clears throat> Let's pray. Father in heaven, thank you once again for a beautiful day. Uh, I pray that you will send your Holy Spirit to guide us as we study your word and help us to better understand. Mm -hmm. And uh, thank you for the wonderful experience this has been and that you have definitely blessed our lives mm -hmm. because I, I feel very blessed. Mm -hmm. I pray these things in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. All right. So let me load up the reading. All right. Since you prayed, I guess I'll do the first paragraph. All right. So... Uh, it reads, after emphasizing the necessity of the shield of faith, you know, I, I think it's kind of good that you're, you're like the person for the next day where you're doing the, because <laughs> it, it literally we just talked about the shield of faith, right? So anyway, uh, after emphasizing the necessity of the shield of faith, Paul instructs the Christian warrior and take the helmet of salvation, Ephesians 6, 17. The helmet of salvation is the assurance of salvation believed deep in one's heart. It is the conviction that we are saved and we do not doubt it in our hearts. Adventists and other Christians that emphasize obedience can easily doubt their sal salvation because they can fall into a legalistic attitude of focusing on obedience to God's law, assuming that it makes them acceptable to God. Hmm. <clears throat> Paul also mentions this helmet in 1 Thessalonians 5 verse 8. But let us who are of the day be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and love, and for a helmet, the hope of salvation. Mm. Having hope in one's salvation is essential for every Christian. Paul stated its importance when he wrote, For we are saved by hope, Romans 8, verse 24. If a soldier loses hope during a battle with an enemy, he will lose the desire to continue the fight. It seems hopeless to go on. Hence, it is important that the Christian always be aware of the salvation God has provided in Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. The assurance and hope of salvation brings comfort to the soul. It protects a person from being troubled and tormented by Satan or tempted one to despair. It keeps the Christian trusting God and rejoicing in him. Without the hope of salvation, there is no joy or peace with God in the heart. Maintaining this joy in the Lord is so important that Paul instructed, rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. I, man, I can't help but wanting to sing that, yeah, that song. I love when, that song. <laughs> be careful for nothing. But in everything, by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. And the peace of God, which, path, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus, Philippians 4, 4, 6, and 7. Rejoicing in the Lord and the peace of God go together. The assurance of salvation is necessary for both of these things to be experienced. Hmm. In Paul's second letter to the Corinthian Christians, he wrote, Now he which establisheth, mercy, establisheth us with you in Christ and hath anointed us is God, mm -hmm. who hath also sealed us and given the earnest of the Spirit in our hearts. Mm -hmm. 2 Corinthians 1, 22, 21 and 22. And real estate and earnest money payment is the assurance of the sale. The Holy Spirit and the life of the Christian is the earnest payment from God assuring their salvation. Mm -hmm. How can you know you have this earnest of the Spirit? Have you been born again by the Spirit? Do mm -hmm. you desire deep in your heart to obey God? When you sin, do you feel sad that you failed God? Mm -hmm. Do you want to be more faithful in the future? If you answer yes to these questions, it is evidence you have the Holy Spirit in your life. Mm -hmm. Satan wants to take the assurance of salvation from you by causing you to look to your sins and failures instead of looking to Christ. The Bible clearly teaches that you are free from the guilt and penalty of sin by faith in Jesus Christ. And this is so important to know that John wrote, and this is the record that God hath given to us eternal life, and this life is in his Son. He that hath the Son hath life, and he that hath not the Son of God hath not life. 
These things I have written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God, that ye may know that ye have eternal life, and that ye may believe on the name of the Son of God. 1 John 5, 11 to 13, with an emphasis added. Hmm. An important question is, how can one find the real assurance of salvation in their life? The Christian salvation is based on God's word, not mm -hmm. feelings. Mm -hmm. Some days you will feel close to God, and other days you won't. One must always look to God's word for one's assurance of spending Amen. eternity with God. So what does the Bible teach about your salvation? One, God loves you and wants you to be saved, John mm -hmm. 3.16. Amen. Two, God himself is giving you the desire to come to Jesus, John 6 verse 44. Mm -hmm. The very fact that you are reading this devotional is clear proof that God is drawing you to Jesus. Amen. Number three, Jesus receives all who sincerely come to him, John 6.37. Jesus is saying, there is no way I will turn away anyone who sincerely comes to me. Amen. Verse 4, you receive eternal life as a free gift of God's grace. Romans 6, verse 23, Ephesians 2, verse 8. Satan will tempt you to look to your sin and your failures, but always remember what John wrote. My little children, these things write I unto you that ye sin not. And mm -hmm. if any man sin... We have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. Amen. First John 2 verse 1. Also, remember, when the sinner brought the lamb as an offering to the priest in the Old Testament, the priest inspected the lamb and not mm. the sinner. Number five. Wow, that's, that's deep, yeah, right? Dude, there. Yeah, 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 I know. I wanna, ooh, that's why that's I powerful. <laughs> I never thought of that yeah, before. Yeah, so. <laughs> Number five. Jesus took all your guilt and sin and paid the penalty for your sin on the cross. Amen. Isaiah 53, verse 6. If you receive Jesus' forgiveness, there is nothing left for God to condemn you for. Number six. God will change you. I'm sorry. God will give you a new heart, new desires, and the grace to change. Ezekiel 36, verse 26 and 27. It is God who changes you, not you who changes yourself. This includes more than forgiveness. Jesus also gives you repentance, the desire not to sin. Him hath God exalted with his right hand to be a prince and a savior, to give, for to give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins. Acts 5, verse 31. Amen. Knowing all that Christ has done for us who believe, why would we ever doubt our salvation? Mm -hmm. For God is saving you and will save you until the end, being confident to this very thing that he which hath begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. Philippians 1, 6. At the very and the very God of peace sanctify you wholly. And I pray, God, your Holy Spirit and soul and body be preserved, blameless unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Faithful is he that calleth you, who also will do it. First Thessalonians 5, 23, 24. Amen. Amen. Oh, man, this is strong. Yeah. Good stuff, man. <laughs> Amen. Uh, like, uh, even for me, I was... I was uh, there are some points there, man. Let's start. What was some <laughs> that definitely kind of... Um, like stood out to you, you know, what, what was some that definitely was where, I mean, a couple of ones for me, well, one, let's quickly talk about the, the, the lamb one, I, I mean. Yeah, number five or yeah, number four? It was, uh, let me Old see. Old Testament, yeah, number four. He inspected the lamb and not the sinner. Yeah, that's right. And, and you know, it, it is a, a comforting thing to remember and, and because it's like, yeah, that's right. Like, we know that we've been, but again, when when we're saying forgive, and I, I imagine these ways, like, hey, look, I, my what I did on the cross, it covers Jonathan. Yeah. Again, God is not looking, at, but he's looking at Jesus because he's standing as the advocate, right? He's yep. so this is the imagery I'm I'm thinking about. Like, of course, he has the sanctuary and all that. That that's what, but just the fact that Jesus is, is now what's seen, you know, instead of us, like you know, wow. Uh, like, <laughs> yeah. wow, oh. yeah, that's 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 very strong. Uh, and, and actually, sorry. <coughs> no worries. <laughs> You're good. So I was thinking about First uh, John one nine. Mm. Uh, if you confess your sins, he's faithful to just to forgive you of your sins. Right. But it doesn't stop there. Right. Right. And to he, cleanse you. To cleanse you from, from all unrighteousness. unrighteousness. That's yeah. different than forgiving you of your sins. That's right. That means right. that he cleanses you from the sin. That's right. Like, and he he gives you the power not to do it anymore. Amen. Amen. That's, and so I, I like that's a powerful promise. That's and it right. says not only is Jesus faithful to do that, mm -hmm. but he's also justified. God is that's justified right. when you confess your sin right. 
and you stop sinning. God is justified. He's Amen. justified not just when you confess your sin, but also, also like, when, they're separate points. That's he's, right. ju- he's doubly justified. Right? <laughs> that's right. I, one that I was, I was going to say was also the, the, the point. See, I'm getting goosebumps, man. Yeah, like, this, is, <laughs> this is a good one. Like, hey, in fact, we were just talking about this before we came that's in. That's right. Like, yeah, right as, before we even started, like, you know, we were just talking about, what, how did we even get into the topic? Uh, we were no. talking about people uh, not hoping or having ah, no hope yes. of salvation. That's right. And I didn't even know it was on the helmet of salvation. <laughs> right. Like, we were, we were talking about how, like, you know, even as, Christ, as Christians, sometimes, even now, if we were to ask you the question, how are you saved? Yeah. Do you, like, do you if you were to die today, right. do you believe you would be in heaven. Right. And, and, and I would hope that if we said, raise your hand if you feel that, if you know that you are saved, then, you know, I, I'm hoping that you would be raising your hand, yeah. especially if you have had a relationship with God as, and, and yeah. you know a lot of what, what the Bible teaches. I'm hoping that you, you have, you're raising your hand because I know so many people in the church, they, 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 they're like, mm, no, I don't know. You know it, it feels, it almost feels presumptuous. Right. Right. Oh, right. just a little bit. Right. But, that's until we actually understand what salvation That's is. Right. And then we're like, oh, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I could totally, exactly. I can raise my hand. Exactly. Yeah. I, like, for me, it's where I, I know for a fact, if someone was to come here and, and take a gun and, and shoot my head, hey, I know I'm, I'm safe. I'm at peace, man. <laughs> you know, exactly. And, and I know for you out there, you're probably thinking like, oh, well, because That's dark. You know, there's all these, yeah, you know, there's all these, um, well, I was thinking about like, there's all these <laughs> things between me and God, you know, like, I, I, yeah, you're a pastor, so you're fine. But no, I, even I recognize, and this we're what, human. Yeah, we're all human. Even I have stuff that I'm like, I'm really far from, from truly showing a hundred percent of who Christ is. Right? Like I'm, mm. I'm a very like I'm a mirror that needs to be cleaned up way more because there's still so many things there. But that's right. But that promise of eternal life, right? That that it is, it's, it's assured. In, yeah. In, 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 Amen. So that's what I we wanted to kind of briefly let you know, and hopefully that you can have that. Boldness, right? Yeah, I know right. we, we talked about the that. Boldness, also. holy boldness. Yeah. yeah, to know that, like Paul, like mm-hmm. Paul wasn't afraid. Yeah, he's like he's standing before Nero, and he's like, I got these chains on, <laughs> but I know where I'm going. Exactly. Do you know where you're going? Amen. <laughs> and, and it's just like what Jesus promised to the thief on the cross, right? Like, uh, surely I say to you. Now, of course, yes, we can talk about uh, now the comma. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the comma and everything and, and everything. But Jesus assured the thief, Hey, yeah, you know, when I come back. And the thief wasn't dead yet. That's right. That's right. The thief could have still, he could have still turned his back on God. That's right. But Jesus gave that assurance to him right then and there. Like yeah. Even on the cross, Jesus was in the whole business of saving and giving that assurance that we can have. Again, not what we've done, but really because Christ in all ways was tempted, but mm. did not sin, did not fall. That's right. right. And so, but anyway, any, any others, man, like that was in the, I know there was one that you mentioned in the, in the, you're reading and I wanted to kind of highlight it if I can um oh, I gotta reopen my phone <laughs> <laughs> do you remember Ooh, the word I do want to touch real quick about the where is it uh the, 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 I guess it's the first paragraph so the helmet of salvation is the assurance uh of, of salvation we believe deep in one's heart. It is the conviction that we are saved. We do not doubt in our heart, hearts. Adventists and other Christians that emphasize obedience can easily doubt their salvation because they can fall into a legalistic attitude of focusing on obedience to God's law, assuming that it made them acceptable to God. I know that was one of those that stood out to me, mm-hmm. just because it's where it's true. You know, again, because you're looking at your obedience or how much. Are you, it, it, it's that, where... That can be a pitfall, yeah. yeah. But I, because we can look at the, the mistakes that we're making. That's and, right. And feel that, because uh, see, Satan's really good at giving oh, yeah. us to doubt. But at the same time, I actually don't agree with that. Mm. Uh, so explain, yeah. I, and I, I, I'm sure, I thought you'd be interested in, yeah. in me saying that, but I don't agree with it because First uh, Timothy 1 verse 5 says the end of the commandment is love from a pure heart mm-hmm. and a good conscience and unfeigned faith. Right. So what that means, whenever you obey the Ten Commandments, you arrive mm-hmm. at unfeigned faith. And mm-hmm. faith makes us acceptable to God. Without mm-hmm. faith, it's impossible to please God. Right. Right. But right. there's a difference between following it and wanting to follow it. Right. Mm. And you see that in uh, Romans, yes. where, where Paul is like, man, I, I, I do what I, yeah. I, I know what is right, but in my body, I still yeah. do what's wrong. Right. So yeah. he's, he's fighting, right? right? He hasn't gained the victory yet, but he's fighting against himself. Right. He's, and that is a Christian that is alive. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, it's different. Whenever you're dead, you just go with whatever. Mm. 
But whenever you're living, you're struggling. Right. And then whenever you're victorious, you've overcome. Amen. And that, of course, the victory comes from Jesus. Amen. I don't believe you're, you're lost because God knows right. the heart. Right. Um, and we can have a clear conscience. And that's what it's all about. Amen. Right? The clean conscience. Amen. I, 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 real quick, because... It, I want to hear what you have to say well, about that. For me, like definitely, I'm on the same boat with you. It yeah. makes sense with that. The reason why, for me, uh, with this one, the only the thing that popped out is where people are looking at how much I've done. It, it, it's the yeah. viewpoint that's perspective works, of, right? Like yeah. it's like, man, I, I I'm not. I haven't killed somebody yeah, in I at least three weeks. <laughs> right, you know, and, right? Like oh, the last time I lied was, uh, you know, yesterday. I'm doing good for today, yeah. you know. But yeah. but again, it, it the focus changed from from. From Jesus. Right. Yeah, because it, it has to do with, okay, yeah, you haven't sinned in two weeks, but mm -hmm. what about the rest of your life? Right, exactly. You know. And, and so in a way, so that's why, for me, that's what popped out. But it wasn't with whether or not I agree with the statement or not. Yeah. But which, So that's why when you brought it up, I was like, oh, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. I, I do disagree <laughs> with that a little bit. But I, right. do, I do agree that an emphasis on obedience, which right. is incredibly important. Right. Uh, faith right. leads to obedience. Right. I do exactly. I believe that emphasis is important, but it can definitely lead right. to legalism. Right. I, and, and it I can definitely be discouraging, especially. <laughs> yeah whenever somebody else is coming at you oh yeah <laughs> and it can be very discouraging that's right and legalistic people are already discouraged right. because they're failing their own standards right not exactly. just god's standards and there's got to be you you can't be so into legalism and you cannot be on the other spectrum of being so liberal that yeah, anything goes that's right you, you gotta be the, in the middle and of course people will say well pastor that that's subjective everyone no i mean they're the Bible is the standard, so kind yeah. of look through. Was Jesus so, so hardcore legalistic? No, I mean he he had he, he obeyed he, the Ten Commandments. He did exactly and <laughs> to the latter and, and, and to even, the spirit. He, yeah, I was about to say. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly, and and yet it was still able to be merciful to people. And, that's and, right, and you know, on the other and end. that's where legalistics. Yeah, that's where legalistic people fail is the mercy mm -hmm. because they're not merciful to themselves mm. and they look at other people and they're right. frustrated and right. they don't show mercy. And that's that is really the problem with legalism, mm -hmm. uh, because in, in, like I said, obedience, right. it does need to be emphasized. Right. It is important. Uh, it right. is actually one of the ways that Jesus right. knows his children. He exactly. says, if you love me, you'll listen. To me. Exactly. If and, you love me, you'll obey me. And, and when you truly love God, I mean, I don't see why you would not want to obey. Like, yeah, if, if he said, hey, don't. Uh, Today you're not going to do this. I'm like, okay, sure, yep. I, no, no problem, Lord. I mean, it's, it's <laughs> fake faith and fake love. That's right. That's the only reason. But and that's why you know the mm -hmm. Ten Commandments they lead you there, mm. right? And so we we do have an ideal, and that is uh, right. be perfect as your Father in heaven is perfect. So mm -hmm. the ideal is as high as God. That's yep. incredibly high. Amen. Incredibly high. Amen. But it's fully possible because yes. with Christ, with God we can do all things. Right. right? I, I was going to add. It, yeah. It's also in Philippians where it talks about how. Uh, it is him who will help us to will and to do for his good pleasure, right? That's right. And, and to will, to desire, to want, like yeah. that, and then to do, so an action, to actually complete, to actually yeah. be able to do whatever it is that's needed. And again, it is him who will help us. It, Amen. It's not, you know. Uh, and that reminds me, actually, I think of the last paragraph had something that I thought was pretty, uh, incompetent. Man, this is an exciting topic. Yeah, this is a good topic. <laughs> I'm liking this. Uh, repentance. There we go. It's the second to last topic. Um, number. Last. It's number six. God will give you a new heart, new desires, and grace to change you. It is God who changes you, not you who changes yourself. Right. Mm. So you know, legalism believe that it's us. We change ourselves, mm -hmm. but I, you know, obedience is a belief, and faith mm -hmm. is a belief that God changes us because. Mm -hmm. We cannot fight our own desires. We right. can't overcome them. So whenever right. I go out and I want to do something, right. I can't overcome it. Mm. In me is not the power to overcome that. I right. have to, I have to receive that hatred of evil from God. Right. The repentance right. means we look back at the things we used to do with disgust, mm. and that is a new heart. Right. right? That right. is something that because what oh, that's you, the greatest what used miracle. to enjoy is like yeah. whoa. That, I no longer do, and exactly. I'm pretty sure Paul says something that's like right. that. That's yeah. right. So he says the things that I I once did, you know, he he no longer likes it. Right. Uh, and that is that is repentance. Mm -hmm. So you know, it's not like we're over there gritting our teeth, like right. oh, you know, I, I, oh man, right. I have to keep the Sabbath. Right. And that's another proof of love too. Like right. uh, the Bible says, herein is, uh, do we know that we love God if we keep His commandments Amen. and they're not grievous to us? Right? right. We're not exactly. like, oh man, this is such that's a right. pain. That's right. Like I, I can't do anything on Sabbath. <laughs> like I, I can't punch this guy. Come on. <laughs> oh, it's not a sin to punch somebody, but it could be. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, anyway, but what, uh, I was going to talk That's, more about I was like, let's a little extreme. <laughs> yeah. But I did want to say, like, at least now, 
this is not where I'm hoping that for anyone because we're, we're all different people, right? Now, That's right. If you are the type where you are legalistic or something like that, now, obviously, we're not condemning you. We're not doing that. But it, it, we're hoping that you are able to see where, what God wants you to do in, with not us. I mean, we're just sharing the information. Yeah. It's, it's what God is coming. But at the other end, whoever is so liberal, whoever is just, oh, yeah, let's accept everything. Like, you know, we got to show that God is love, but yep. then they're not showing that, look, there, there is that obedience aspect. There's also yep. that, that the, there is a limit. Yeah, 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 you can love everybody, but even though, uh, but it doesn't mean that I'm going to do all these, you know, there, there's a, a set, there's a, a, there, a there's limit. A, there's uh, a difference between man's love and God's love. That's right. That's and right. God's love is revealed in the Ten Commandments. Amen. First four, love God with all your heart. Last six, yep. love your neighbor as there yourself. You Amen. And so that's why, you know, it's, it's right. love. And, and I will admit, now this is where I'll, I'll open myself up. Between the two, I think I'm definitely more on the the liberal side. Like, in comparison to the scale of the extremes, yeah. now, of course, I again, you want to be in the middle. Like, for me, I recognize I am at, on the liberal side, but, of course, Ten Commandments as the guideline and everything. Yeah. But it is where I tend to kind of be open and, and say, okay, you know, give mercy, where sometimes, it's, you know, it's got to me in trouble because obviously it's where it's like, okay, they have not had that conversion or anything like that and well you know it, but it's it is better if you're gonna err right. and Ellen White says this, yes. if you're gonna make a mistake it's better to be more more merciful <laughs> right. than, than too right. judgmental right and, and yeah and and god recognizes that right. yeah you know, he says i will have mercy not Amen. sacrifice uh, yes I was, <laughs> jose also <laughs> yeah so i was also gonna say so if you are someone who has gone through where the church or a, a member or someone was harsh to you in in you know it is where we hopefully you have that forgiveness in the heart mm. for what they've done and it's where you know even for us like i know we we've had our times when oh, yeah. with either either we were scolded by uh, or we did the or scolding. we did the scolding and <laughs> yep. again this is this is that dialogue that we're all having that hey look there's only one who's higher than all of us and it's not the pastors not the elders yeah. deacons the one who's higher than us is jesus christ That's he's right. the, he's that example you know and you know yeah all of us here all of us we're on the same level mm. and so amen now we, we should probably answer a question. Yes, <laughs> we, we should because, you know, we, we might end up. <laughs> so our, our discussion questions are, what dangerous attitude can Christians fall into considering their acceptance with God? What is the helmet of salvation? And list why you can know you are saved and have eternal life. So I feel like we've kind of touched a little bit on the dangerous attitude just mm -hmm. based on our, our conversations, but... Are yeah. we, are, we could do most most dangerous thing is uh, like legalism is very dangerous. It's it's a miserable existence. Right. I use I was very legalistic growing up. Mm. It's it's absolutely terrible because you can never reach the standard that you yourself hold. But right. it becomes extremely dangerous to other people right. when you take that standard and start looking at other people. Right. With it. And then and using and that gets, as that. Yeah. It gets really right. bad when it, when you uh, take that standard towards other people. Right. I will admit. I, I'm the type of person where, which I, I guess as we're doing this, we will go into our, our question of, of which one we choose. But I know I'm the type where, for sure, I'm very harsh on myself. You know, it's oh, where yeah, me too. it's where I'm like, Lord, you know, I, like I I'm doing the da da da, and it's where, but I I don't put it on other people because yeah. it's like I don't know how much I'm very stern with myself. So it's yeah. like I can only I, I know I'm not gonna do it on that. So, right. but some people they they're not like that. Okay, hey, this is the standard I'm living. Hey, you need to live up to this standard that yeah. I, which again, so we well, ask for forgiveness if yeah. members have come up to you and, 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 Mercy. you know, so anyway, yeah. yeah, you were saying? Jesus, Jesus is the standard, Amen. Uh, not, amen. not anybody else. Amen, amen. <laughs> so, I mean, maybe we can do the, the last one, this reasons why you know you are saved and have eternal life. I mean, that reassurance of, that's, that's a good one. You know, I like that. Yeah. Because, I mean, we, yeah, we can talk about the helmet of salvation, but I think this would kind of help out, again, just reinforcing not only to you, but also for us. Like, yeah. you know, it's like, so, and I think that's the one that you were reading. Like, yeah. <laughs> so, how, like, you're, for your reasons, mm -hmm. Pastor Island, how many do you think you have? How, how many, like, I, I'm looking like strong, real. And when I say reason, <laughs> right. like, from a reasonable point of view, right? From okay. Re the reason of faith, all right? Like, right. like Abraham, he's right. like, I'm sure that God can bring my son back from the dead. Mm. That kind of reason. So for me, the reason why I'm, are you saying why I'm saved? Why you believe you're saved? Why I believe I'm saved? Honestly, the real reason is because Christ died for the sins 
you know? and and I say that, and I know it seems like a very oh, of course, but he doesn't know. But I mean, because of the life I used to live, right, mm. where I didn't care for him, I didn't, you know, uh, smoking, drinking, leading people, like cussing, using the Lord's name in vain, drugs, all this stuff, like mm. living a life of pleasure, all of of this world, like it literally. The whole one hundred percent opposite of what I'm doing now. You know? Yeah, and, and that's and, a good way to do. You know, like for God to to reach <gasps> out and and save me, like to when I called out to Him and He was the only one who answered. When no one else, no no family members or uh, friends who said, "Hey, we'll be there with you." You know, no matter what, no one, uh, you can trust us. We'll be no one. It was only God who answered. Mm. And, and for that, that's where the fact that He can intercede into my life when when you know and and take me out of that and everything it's why the very least i can do is what i'm doing you know like yeah. and i mean so i if someone was to to kill me right now hey look all i would do is pray for them and hope that they would find god at the end amen but it's where that so that's my personal real reason so uh, i'm gonna so john 3 16 I'm, I'm that, that's try, my my verse i'm of, gonna try <laughs> to rephrase your answer sure. so you're you are believing that you are saved based off of the evidence of god working in your life yes, yes. okay that's that's a good that's a good one <laughs> that's a good reason i i would say uh something very similar mm -hmm. but i two reasons mm. And while you were talking, I completely forgot the second. <laughs> so no the first one would be uh, John 17, 3. John 17, um, 3. John 17, 3 says, Now this is eternal life, that they might know Amen. thee, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom thou hast sent. Amen. So I know I have eternal life because I have a relationship with Jesus. Amen. And I, that relationship with Jesus is gained through Bible study and through prayer. Amen. I pray uh, in the morning. I ask Jesus to come into my life. Amen. I pray for strength to overcome. I pray that he will change my heart. Amen. I ask for the Holy Spirit because I can't do it myself. Right. And then uh, I read my Bible and that is where God speaks back to Amen. me. So Amen. I speak to him, he speaks back to me. And that's, that's a relationship. It's been Amen. ongoing um, for more than three years, Amen. Uh, morning and evening, Amen. actually. Amen. And that's, 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 awesome. one of the, that's one of the ways I know right. is because I, I am confident I have a relationship with Jesus right. and he, well, he speaks to me Amen. because Amen. that's a relationship. That's like right. if, if I never heard anything from God, I would start doubting. <laughs> I'd be like, wait a minute. Right. You know, sometimes, uh, sometimes some of the stuff he says is just so intriguing right. that I, I am rolling around on my floor <laughs> because I'm so excited. Like, right, this right. is the coolest thing ever. <laughs> because God knows how to speak to Amen. our hearts, right? Amen. That's right. I, I, and just exactly what you said. It's where, now, could, if someone was to come and say, like, you know, prove to me God is real. Uh, well, I, I, I can point him, him or her to whatever, but it's where, why do you believe in God? Well, it's like, Again, what you said, Personal there, there's, there's so much evidence in I've my life. I've seen, yeah, to, evidence to, in my life. And that's kind of what you were going yeah, through. Yep. Right? So that's, that's where mine and yours are really close together. Right, right. We, we have evidence that Jesus is in our life. Right. The second one would be the answer of a clean conscience. Amen. And that's biblical as well. Amen. I don't remember the Bible verse. <laughs> no worries. But it's, it's not bapt, uh, well, baptism is an example of it. Right. It's that outward of, of It's the outward demonstration right. of an inward thing. It's the, uh, the answer of a clean conscience right. towards God that saves us. So yeah. my conscience is clean. Right now I ask myself, is there anything between me and God? Mm -hmm. And if you ask yourself that and there is something between you and God, mm. immediately you will think of <laughs> yeah. what it is because right. that, that's the Holy Spirit. Right. He's like, Amen. you got you to gotta change this. Yeah, you got to take this out. This so, is, yeah. you know, right now he's warning me, you better be very careful over there. Right? <laughs> right, right. Like that, you, you got to watch out about that. Right. But no, right now you have a clean conscience Amen. and that Amen. gives it's peace with God. That's right. But whenever you have a heavy conscience, you can't sleep. That's right. It, it's that's right. like whenever God has and, and changed you, your you heart, know you that. feel it. You, you, he'll be reminding you. It's like, yeah. it's until you make that, yep. which that clear, like, this, like, leave me alone, or like, yeah. I know, I know, but I don't want to hear, like. Where you go your own way. Oh, and mercy. he does it, he does not stop, like, yeah. completely. It's like, yeah. it's like Jesus is knocking on the door of your heart, and he's Amen. like, Jonathan, Jonathan, Amen. Jonathan, I'm not going to stop until you answer. <laughs> Amen. And you're like, I, and every time that happens, I know exactly what it is Amen. that I've done. Amen. And without a doubt, I know what it's done, and, you know, sometimes if we humble ourselves immediately, because yeah. that's, that's really right. what, it, that's all right. it is, is Jesus says, only admit that yeah. you've sinned right. and I will cause all your transgressions Amen. to pass away, right? Amen. And first John one nine, confess right. your sin, right? right? Just admit that you made even a mistake. Just, admit that right. you even did if this. you don't know and you say, Lord, forgive me for my sins. Uh, you know, help me to come yeah. uh, to remember. Me. Yeah. And David prayed it. Cleanse yeah. me from secret yes. sins, right? The sins that he doesn't yes. know that he committed. Uh, uh, Seek, seek my heart, uh, search my heart. Like, yeah, search me, oh God, and know yeah, my heart. There you go. Yeah. And so, Amen. And, and that's 
a simple prayer where even if someone is, is coming in as a first time, not even a Christian stuff, and like, I don't think I have anything. Oh, trust me, talk to God. Pray and say like, Lord, what, help reveal to me what I need to do in order for me to grow close to you. Or, you know, co convict me of the sin that I'm committing. You know, mm. Forgive me on it and help me to turn away from it, to, to submit to God, resist the devil, right? Yeah. And, and so it is where, again, this, this is that dialogue, that relationship, again, that you yep. said. And, Amen. And, you know, it would be, it'd be real dangerous if pastor or I just suddenly said, oh, yeah, I know I'm saved because yesterday yeah. I, you know, <laughs> no, so, I didn't sin right, so, and uh, I, uh, yeah. I didn't give into this and I didn't do that. And, you know, I, I haven't, I haven't smoked in like, right. you know, so, five years. And so I, I know I'm going right. to heaven for that. So we want to make, <laughs> we want to make it clear that you, you can be assured of salvation, right? You, yeah. you can definitely be assured that you have salvation, but it is where, again, it's a conditional that if you choose to not want to be with God at all, like you are making that, that that's, that's when you're, you're, and again, if you have the son, you have life. If you don't have the son, right. you don't have life. Yeah. And so if you are cutting that, that dialogue with God or relationship with Christ, I mean, that's when definitely you are getting to dangerous zones that I'm, that I'm hoping it never comes to you making that decision because you're going into the part of the unpardonable, all that stuff. Yeah. And it's very so, dangerous. you know, so, Again, if you even are worried about, like, have I committed the unpardonable sin? Hey, the fact that you're worried about yeah. that means you have not yeah, committed it. And, you know, that's something that everybody, all new Christians struggle with that. Yeah. Because Satan immediately, Satan's like, oh, he's starting mm. to, or he or she, they're starting to change. Let me just right. tell him, we'll try to convince him real right. quick that, that they've committed the unpardonable sin. Yeah. And, you know, and I the, went through it. My yeah. little brother went through I've it. I've gone through it. Everybody yeah. goes through that, and, where and, they think they've committed that's the right. unpardonable and sin. It's, again, if you feel that you've, you have committed, that means you have not committed it. Yeah. And the reason why is because the unpardonable is, again, going back to First John 1, 9. It's basically not caring at right. all what the Holy People Spirit have says. become so callous to their sin that they don't even realize it's a sin, that they don't even ask God for forgiveness. They so feel no need. That's right. Yeah. And, and so that's why it's unpardonable. Not because God is not unwilling to, to, to forgive. It's because they've gone to the point where they don't even ask for forgiveness. Yeah, they won't because, ask. So God cannot forgive because they're not asking. Yeah. Like, you know, and again, First John 1, 9, if he confess. So, yeah, that's right. But anyway, I know we were supposed to do the list, but no, I, I thank you for that that change of of uh, yeah, that was question. <laughs> <laughs> whoops. <laughs> no, no, it's good. It's good. Like, cause no, it, wasn't it, that no, the last one on the list? Uh, the last one was list reasons why you can know you are saved and have eternal life. Yeah, yeah, that's that's, yeah. that's what we did. Yeah, we yeah, did. We answered number three. <laughs> <laughs> and so, but anyway, definitely, I, I, dude, we can talk about this for so for long. for a long time. Like, yeah, but we hope that for you, you are also having this dialogue with Christ. I mean. Again, it's a hard life. A Christian life is not easy, mm. but it is one that is truly where it has not, I don't want to say rewards and make you want to like, oh, I got to work. Again, well, it, it, it has the most powerful blessing. You can, so many benefits and, and merits, but again, it's because of you having that relationship with the Christ where all these come into and it's way more than what the world can offer. That's 100% for sure. Like, That's right. Way it, more than the world it, can it, offer. It's, it's not even like a, a question at all of me wanting to go back to the world. You know, like for instance, it's where I'm like, dude, I love God. I, I Lord, I, I want people to know about you. And so mm. it's, if you can get to that relation and if you are, praise God, I'm glad, you know, yeah, like, amen. You know, and, but I know even then in our walk, like you, you said three years, was you a Christian? Right? We all stumble. Yep. For me, it was when it was 2010 was when I was baptizing. But I'm, I still have my struggles and everything. But I praise God. He's faithful. Amen. Yeah. You know, and the so the Bible says a righteous man falls seven times. And yeah. when I found that Bible verse, I was like, a righteous man falls? <laughs> like, how is he still righteous? Right. It's right. because he falls at the feet of Jesus. Amen. Ooh, that's, amen. That's right. what it is. Man. Right. And so, uh, well, shall we go in prayer, my brother? And I know that uh, we do have some focuses. Mm -hmm. So fill, ask God to fill you with his spirit, a revival for the church, as well as to give you the assurance of salvation in your heart and bless those on the prayer list, you know? And I think you prayed, so I, That's right. I did the I first prayer. Yeah, yeah, so, so I will end it today. And so let's pray. Father God Almighty, Lord, uh, truly it's a, this is a, a blessing, Lord, and we want to praise you and thank you, Father, for who you are, Lord. And it's where, again, I know many times for all of us, Lord, we, we sometimes kind of go into looking at our sins and looking at things we've done. And, and Lord, sometimes we even listen to the doubt, Lord, and forgive us, oh Lord. 
Lord, you know Amen. where each and every one of us are. You know exactly what we need to say to you, to confess to you, Lord. And we ask for forgiveness, Father. And right now it's where let I ask that you inter, intercede into each and every one of us who to convict us, Lord, of what we must do in order to grow closer to you, Lord. Father God, I pray, especially right now, to each and every single person that you give them that assurance, Lord. Let them also realize Amen. the assurance of salvation that they can find in you, Lord, and, and that they can move forward, Lord, in, in rejoicing always, Father, because they know that they are saved, not by anything they've done, but all because of what you have done, Lord. Let them have that relationship with you, Lord. And Father God, let it be again where you are glorified in all of this, Lord, and, and just for that dialogue to take place. Let it be that your voice is the loudest thing that they hear. Amen. And so, Father God, we love you so much. Be with us now. We pray all these things in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Amen. Well, definitely we hope you were blessed. And thank you, man, for joining for another day. <laughs> My pleasure. And so, all right, you have a good day, good night, wherever you are. God bless. And we will see you tomorrow with the 39. And so, bye. God bless.